ंग <laughs> You give us the understanding of your word. You give us the revelation of your word. You make this teaching extremely simple and easy, so that Lord, we are able to understand your word, and not only understand your word, but also able to apply the same word, to apply the same truth in our life also, so that we are able to experience the same manifestation, the same. Result, Lord, as you thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we are about to spend with your word. And Lord, as we have gathered over here, it is your anointing that has filled us, your anointing that is dwelling in us, your anointing that is uh, totally in us, Lord. And it is because of what you have done for us. Today we are set free. Today we have received freedom. Today we have received liberty. Today we are totally set free from every lie of the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father, in the glorious and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. So welcome everyone. Thank you, Jesus. So we are continuing from what we were saying um, yesterday, and yesterday we were saying about uh, about the laws, uh, the authority that is given to us, and enforcing the laws. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to one Peter chapter one verse twenty three. You know. One Peter, one twenty-three. You know, you don't have to put the whole uh, like Peter. You don't have to put the whole. You can just put the first three letters. Then it will come. Twenty-three. Okay, being born again, not of. corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which lives and abides forever so we all know the scripture being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed by the word of god that means now god has created us uh with seed god you if you see god has created everything with seed in it okay and the seed if you see the seed what was the seed the seed was his very own words so when god has created us he created us also with a seed the seed was not the seed was not the corruptible seed but it was the incorruptible seed but because of adam today we are born of we are born of corruptible seed we are born from the corrupted nature of adam now the very moment i believe in jesus christ i accept jesus as the lord god and savior that means now i the seed in me is changing from corruptible seed to an incorruptible seed by the word of god praise god so uh, just give me a uh, genesis chapter 1 verse 11 you know i'll show you that verse and god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself whose seed is in itself see that word whose seed is in itself that means the scripture is saying 
God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the uh, fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Did he only say, let there be tree? If he would have said, no, let there be trees, by then, by today, there would have been no trees. Because all the trees would have died, new, new trees would have not come. But because he said, after, produce after his own kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, that means what did God say? These trees have seed in themselves. So if a tree dies, the seed will still grow and bring another tree in that place. And if that other tree dies, it will continue, bring another tree and another tree and another tree and another tree just because of that one seed. And that is why if you see according to God, God is saying whose seed is in it? Self. Whose seed is in it? Self. Whose seed is in it? Self. That means now he's trying to say this fruit, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth, and it was so. That means the word of God says, that means the Bible says, that now he said, you shall bring forth fruit after his kind. After the tree's kind. So today, that's what God created everything with the seed. He created the trees with the seed. He created the plants with the seed. He created us with seed. He created the uh, living things on this earth with the seed. And he is saying, now that we are created by seed, this seed was actually the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Because it was the incorruptible seed, that is why we were able to be made in the likeness and image of God. But then when we doubted the word of God, when we didn't believe the word of God, now the incorruptible, uh, incorruptible seed became a corruptible seed because of sin. Are you understanding? Let's come back to 1 Peter 1.23. You know, he's not there. Okay. Be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. That means today we are born of incorruptible seed by the word of God which lives and abides forever. That means now we have been given the authority, we have been given the power, and now because of the incorruptible seed that is within us, because of the incorruptible seed that is dwelling in us, today we are made the righteousness of God because once we were living in the corruptible seed, but because Jesus was born of the incorruptible seed, because Jesus was conceived under the power of the Holy Ghost, that is why even today when I believe in Jesus, I am born of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. That's what he's saying, for all flesh is as grass, uh, uh, sorry, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. So you understanding? Okay, praise God. No, uh, thank you, Jesus. Now let's go to Acts chapter 16. Before that, uh, let me give the background of what happens in Acts chapter 16. Now, if you see, there was uh, two people preaching the word of God. Paul and... Paul and who? Paul and... Paul and Silas. They're going and preaching and they're preaching in one country where God had told them to go and preach in. And they are preaching and preaching the word of God. You know, and healings are happening, miracles are happening. And uh, people are seeing these miracles happening. 
Now, when they go into that place, there was a girl. Okay, a girl of, uh, she had an evil spirit and the spirit was of fortune telling. And there were certain people who were making money from her, business from her, who got very angry. And because of that, because they got extremely angry with this Paul and Silas, they tied them, they beat them, and they took them to the government and things like that, and they put them in the prison. They put them in the prison. So these uh, people, uh, Paul and Silas, they were preaching the word, but they are put in the prison. And this torture in the prison is not just normal torture. It is, they are bleeding. They are, you know, their blood is coming. They are in the toilet, you know, in that uh, prison. They can't go to the toilet. They can't go to the washroom. They are staying over there whole day, whole night, tied up to chains, not even getting to move. So when Paul and Silas are sitting to this, you know, in this, the they are praising God as you know they were not murmuring to God, they were not uh, fierce with God, they were not angry with God. If you say actually they were praising God, they were murmuring, uh, they were praising God, not murmuring, they were rejoicing with the Lord because they knew what the scripture says: rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say. Rejoice. So they are rejoicing always and they are praising God in the midst of the situation. Now, if you were there and you are seeing two people praising God and you are in the prison, what would be your condition? These people are gone really mad. They were put in the inner cell, they were put in the prison, and your condition, you would be thinking these people are mad. They are mad. Clearly, to say they are mad. Because who would praise God being in a situation like that? Because if we are in a situation here, we are a little bit in the worry. We are a little bit in the stress. Not even beaten, not even bleeding. Little bit in the worry. How you'll feel? If, you are, if, for example, there was COVID, for example, everyone was worried. Everyone is fear. For example, if someone goes out on the streets and say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, and starts praising God on the road, now what will be all the condition of the houses on the street? This man is gone. God, crazy. are you gone mad? Yeah, you're gone mad. You're gone crazy. Bad on this, you are thing. coming out and praising God. Are they? In this pandemic, you are coming out and praising God. Yeah, that is the question, question mark. But for example, you see Paul and Silas, they are praising God in a situation where they are beaten, they are bleeding, they are tied with chains, they can't even move, they can't even turn around, they can't even, okay, they have to sit on the floor, they are in such a terrible situation, much more bigger than how much we go through today. Now, being in that situation, they were praising the Lord, what would be the, all the other prisoners? condition. These two people, they are gone mad. How they can pray God in the midst of the situation? But then you see there is a jailer. The jailer is responsible for to look after all the prison. Okay, he is responsible to look after all the prisoners so that no one is escaped. And it would be so strict that if someone does not look and someone escapes and the jailer is not paying attention, what will happen to the jailer? The jailer would be killed with torture. Not just killed normally, but killed with torture. Okay. Now, Paul and Silas are praising God. They are worshipping God. And they are seeing, you know, all the prison doors are opening, all the chains are breaking. But what will happen to all the other prisoners? Prisoners. Escape, escape, escape. But they did not escape. You know the reason why? Because they saw the glory of God. They could see God's glory. And they saw what happened, but they did not escape. Now the jailer saw sees all the gates are open. So he doesn't see inside the prison. He thinks all the gates are open. That means all the prisoners have escaped. So, because he knows the nature of man, what is the nature of man for the prisoners to escape? So, now I'm going to be killed. Instead of being killed full of torture, let me just kill myself. And he was about to kill himself. And Paul and Silas stood up 
shouted loudly saying to the jailer, we have not escaped. We are still inside. We are still in, in, you know, inside the prisoners, prison doors. Now what will be the condition of the, of the jailer? What would be the condition of the jailer? The jailer would be surprised. The jailer would have been amazed. The jailer would have been, you know, what is this? You know, he, he if you see in that condition, he was able to see the glory of God. Just give me that Acts chapter 16. Huh? Now you can put it. Uh, verse number, you can give me verse number 28. Put 27. Okay, uh, does anyone want to read that? Okay, read from uh, 25. I'll read it. Yeah, read it. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and every one's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Should I continue? Yeah, continue. Okay. Uh, but but Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, "Do thyself no harm, for we are all here." Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" And they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved." and thy house. And they spoke unto them the word of the Lord and to all that were in the, his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. Okay, praise God. Now scroll up to the 31 verse, 30th, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and your house. Now, did they say, Baptize yourself, change your name, go to the church, register here, do this, do that, remove all the idols in your house, do this, go here, go there, then you have to do this, then you have to do that, and then you will be saved? Was that what Paul and Silas replied? No. No. What did Paul and Silas reply? Paul and Silas replied, they, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, aren't we telling them, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. But God, according to God, is saying, do not, you don't have to do anything like that. You only need to believe. According to the word of God, according to the gospel of God, you only need to believe. Praise God. So many a time, don't we have the thing like, what, I, what do I need to do to be saved? Yeah. We don't any. But according to the word of God, do I need to do anything to be saved? No. Because according to the word of God, the Bible says, the word of God says that God is the one who has done everything. I don't need to do anything lest I need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. So I don't have to work. I don't have to do anything. But instead, I have to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved and thou shalt be saved and your whole household shall be saved. Not only you 
but your whole household shall be saved. Praise God. So are you studying? Yes. See, I can do nothing to be accepted by God. Let me tell you that. I can't do anything to be accepted by God. If a person wants to be accepted by God, if a person wants to be put into the family of God, he doesn't need to do anything. The only main thing that that person needs to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, know what Jesus has finished, understand what Jesus has finished, and live according to what Jesus has already done. Praise God. So I only need to believe, believe what the Lord Jesus Christ, because there is nothing that I can do to be accepted. God is not looking at my works. God is looking at me, how much I'm ready to believe his word. God is seeing me, how much I'm ready to accept his word, believe his word, and live according to his word. word. That's what Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, verse 9 or verse 10, just for that. Romans chapter 10. Acts is just uh, before Romans, you know. Romans? 10. First number, I think 10. 9 or 10. I think 10. 10. Yeah. Nine. 10. Okay, see that. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That means now he is saying, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and it is with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. So for for for, for the jailer to be changed, for the jailer to be transformed, he only needed to believe the word. He only needed to believe. And that's why what is Paul and Silas replying? Paul and Silas is replying saying, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe. And what is this belief? This belief is the action corresponding to the message. So when a person is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the action is corresponding to the message. Praise God. That's what he's saying. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So, what is this confession? When I believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ, and I confess with the mouth that God has raised him from the dead. I shall be saved, according to the right to us, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, receive salvation, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you have believed unto righteousness, this salvation, this righteousness, this confession, this is leading you to be saved. But if I don't know the promise of God, if I don't understand what God has accomplished for me, what God has finished for me, let me tell you, I will never be able to live the life that God has told me to live because I am thinking that I'm doing and I can live. But no one of us, not any single one of us are able to live the life of God by our doing because of what I did. I qualify. I live the life according to the word of God. It is because of my believing, not because of my works. It is because of my believing, believing in the Lord Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. In the next verse, for the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. So when I believe in the Lord Jesus, there is not going to be any shame. There is not going to be any ashamed, ashamedness, shameless. Because now I'm operating according to the word of God. I will never be put to a shame. I will never be ashamed. Because when I know what God has promised, when I know what he has finished for me, when I know what he loves me and what he did for me on that cross 2,000 years ago, and I believe in what he has done, I am able to receive what the Lord has done in me.
Prince Scott. Thank you, Jesus. Science study. So today we have been made the righteousness of God because we believe in Jesus. Now that we believe in Jesus, I need to accept Jesus as the Lord God and Savior. I need to believe in him. When I believe Jesus as the Lord God and Savior, I accept Jesus as the Lord God and Savior. I'm able to receive whatever God has for me. Because God has a mighty plan. God has a mighty purpose. The only way to receive the plan that he has for me, the purpose that he has for me, I need to believe. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. So did you understand? Are there any questions? You know, you can take the scripture down. Thank you, you know. So did you understand? Yeah, uh, listen, I actually, when you, when you shared Genesis 1, 11, right? That is the fruit yielding, uh, the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself. I was just thinking about uh, how the fruits of the Holy Spirit, they like love, joy, peace. Even they have seeds of its kind within themselves. Like say, suppose you experience God's love and then you share that love with someone else. They're actually planting the seed of love in that person. Yeah. So and it's like... Yeah, you're planting the seed of love in that person also. And plus, when you, uh, if you want to really experience the love, the only way to experience is when you start planting the seed of love when you start saying according to the word of god the love of god is poured into me by the holy ghost when you start seeing no speaking you're planting mm -hmm. seed and you also are experiencing the same love plus you're planting the same seed as how you said in others also correct yeah it's quite analogous to in actual fruits yeah praise god yeah that's why you need to plant the seed of forgiveness. You need to plant the seed of love. You need to plant the seed of patience. All this, you have to plant the seed. Praise God. So, uh, did you understand any other questions? Anyone? Okay, we'll close with the prayer. So, does anyone want to do the ending prayer? Anyone? Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we have spent with your word. Lord, as we have understood your word, it is your word, it is your truth that has set us free from every life the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us this amazing truth. And Lord, as we have understood with this word, we are sure, Lord, to apply the same word, to apply the same truth, to apply the same gospel in our life also, so that, Lord, we are able to experience the plan, the purpose that you have for us, the mission that you have for us, the vision that you have for us. Because according to the word, you have a mighty plan for us. You have a mighty purpose for us. And the only way we are able to experience that plan, that purpose, us is because we are studying your word because it is your word that is setting us free thank you lord jesus for teaching us this amazing truth and lord as we have heard the word we are sure lord to apply the same word we are sure to apply the same truth in our life also so that lord we are able to experience the plans the purpose that you have for us thank you lord in jesus mighty name we pray above father amen amen amen